So another really interesting bike, certainly for me anyway, I'm not sure so much for Darren, but certainly for me, KTM's new middleweight adventure bike, um, their 790 Adventure, which is their road variant, and the Adventure R, which is kind of more off-road biased, which we've just got behind us. Um, this, this bike has been produced kind of in response to KTM's existing customer base. They've been sort of screaming out for a lighter weight, uh, sm slightly smaller capacity motored um, adventure, adventure bike. bike that will do both the on-road stuff, so it'll do mile munching, but it'll also be a seriously capable off-roading machine. So you can ride the trails, you can you can really hustle the bike off-road too. So what they've produced is two different variants. So they've got the, the standard Adventure mm -hmm. and the Adventure R, which is the bike behind us. So this is a more road-orientated bike. This is the more road-orientated bike. So um, obviously you'll see a couple of different sort of significant aesthetic differences. First, the front mud guard is obviously much closer to the to the wheel and then when you look at the uh, adventure R bike you've got more of a beak it's a much higher position which is kind of more traditional with sure. your Long, longer travel suspension longer travel so you've got both got a 20 litre tank so you've also got a bike with a massive amount of range as well which is really useful for a tool like this um, you've got uh, Carew Nobblies on that one. Avon have, have taken care of the tyres on this. So you've got a much more road biased tyre on this bike as well. Yeah. Whereas something that's much more off road biased on the, on the R spec bike. Um, suite of electronics. Yeah. Uh, so cornering ABS, TFT screen, optional cruise control. You know, it's got a raft of nice technical bits and pieces on it. I mean, I've had a good sit on it today. I'm a fan, actually. Well, you, well, you've rode the 790, haven't I you? Have. So, so you have, you have got, you well, know, a bit of insider knowledge. Absolutely, on, I was lucky enough to. And actually, the 790 has been a super popular bike, oh, and, and, and really highly rated by pretty much everyone I've seen yeah, I, and talked to who've rode it. Well, I think, I think, you know, um, the, the reality is KTM have had to come to the party in a big way in that sort of middleweight sector. You've got Triumph 765 Triple, you've got Z900, you've got some really really mt09 you've got some really competitive bikes in that area so the 790 great had, engine great it had to be had to be a really good bike and that 790 motor is brilliant parallel twin just shy of 100 horsepower the other thing with this and i think nice this weight is, nice weight. yeah exactly absolutely uh, took the words right my mouth. The, the reality with this is it, it has to be a lighter weight bike so it's 189 kilos dry is it but, yeah so okay yeah i mean you're talking well you know it seems like most bikes that we're sort of like talking about now you, you know they're all sort of like knocking on that 200 well, 200 plus we, we reviewed a, a harley yesterday it's 300 <laughs> kilos i'm sure yeah. i think my house weighs slightly <laughs> right, less okay. than, than that harley davidson it was probably a bit cheap but anyway onto the, onto we, we liked the, um, it um back to the ktm yeah so so it's a key factor though that is you know uh, i think w again we're going to talk about some of the more sport orientated bikes over the next couple of days when we do some more reviews and everybody is very careful to make sure that their bikes are getting lighter and more powerful. What, what, what KTM have done really well here is they've responded to what their customers have asked for. They wanted a lighter bike, but a, but a bike with good torque Capable. and good power. And you know, having ridden the, the 790, it goes tremendously well. It's got a hugely characterful motor, but loads of torque, good linear spread of power. But on a lighter weight bike, you can, you know, this is a bike you could, if you, if you dropped it, you could probably pick it up. And I know that sounds silly, but I mean, look, we were out in Spain this year with Red Tread. How many times were we picking bikes up off the floor? Well, the, I mean, for me, that was one of the takeaway factors is actually if I was going to do serious off-roading, you know, you're probably going to crash it at some point. Well, I mean, and, 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 <laughs> goes you know, without saying, doesn't do, it really? Do you want a quarter of a ton machine either landing on your leg or wanting to pick it up? Or do you actually want to drop a 20 grand well, No, absolutely. absolutely. And, and, and scuff up all the sides, all that kind of stuff. So, the, you know, these lighter weight adventure bikes have really got you know some traction haven't they because yeah. actually they're lighter weight well, but then they have all the benefits of some of the bigger machines that they are mile munching they've got your heat yes. grips they've got all the tft blah 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 yeah, i mean it really which you don't get with a proper enduro bike no do you? you don't absolutely not and you know the, 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 i mean that wr250f <laughs> i mean great at what it does but it was a tool for doing what it does totally and nothing basic. else yeah yeah i mean you know that that is very much fit for one particular purpose yes. i think what they try to do with this is create a bike that just ticks an awful lot of boxes and they've done a very good job of that and that you know the the, the, the weight is also a factor when you think about how much power the bike needs you know if you look yeah. at i dare i say it's something like a gs you, you, you're talking about quarter of a ton nearest yeah. damn it you, you know you certainly put some panniers on it and a full tank of fuel this is a 200 kilo bike so you don't need to run a huge performance engine you can have something that again it means because you've got a compact motor in there it's lighter weight lower center of gravity it's narrower so it's easier yeah. to handle when you when you're standing on the pegs you know it does tick an awful lot of boxes um, I mean, styling wise, well, you know, that, I guess it's like anything, isn't it? It's a, it's a matter of opinion. I really like it. I particularly like it with the white fairing rather than the orange. Um, yeah. The only, the only sort of big, yeah, uh, come over this one, Mark. A, a, ambiguous area with this bike at the moment 
is a course that we don't know how much it's going to be priced at. Now, I did have a sneaky little word with one of the guys who's working on the stand this week, and I think we were both in rough agreement. I think 12-ish is probably going to where, where you're going to start. But is that right? again, you, you know, you talk, you could have a suite of accessories, you know, uh, sump guards, all this type of thing. I mean, there's loads of different bits and pieces you want to put on it. If well, you were sump guard is the standard, it must be right. I'm, do you know what? I'm not entirely sure. I'd have to have a look. I'm not, I don't, obviously, the price. Well, it's isn't a proper there. sump guard. You know, it's yeah. not a nod to one. It is no, a proper absolutely. sump guard. Absolutely. The only other area I'm slightly um, uh, not so clear about is obviously all this side mounting and stuff. Yeah. You, you, you know, you're going to whack the hell out of that if you drop it. You know, and obviously a um, direct competitor would be something like the, the brand new Tenere 700. I think. In I mean, my own personal opinion, just looking at it, I would sort of, if you're going to give me the choice one or the other, I'd probably take the Tenere at this I, I, point. I think, I think the key word here is compromise, isn't it? And, yeah. I, and I think, you know, we, we, we're going to look at that Tenere. And again, it's a really interesting motorcycle, a motorcycle that I think Yamaha have been threatening to produce for a good period of time. Again, we were here last year, they, they had the, the prototype, the concept variant, and it was obvious it was going to come. But I do think that is a, a significantly more off-road bias bike. Mm. I think this, they are really trying to find a compromise between having something with good road manners and also something that's really capable off-road. I mean, it's, it's I mean KTM to get well. are the king of oh. off-road, right? I mean, you know, I mean, again, we've had conversations with guys who do a lot more off-roading than we ever will, yeah. and they speak very, very highly of what KTM do oh, on off-road. Phenomenal. So I think, the I think you know, again, the proof will be in the pudding, won't it? You know, yeah. ultimately, we, we're, it's another bike we would love to have a go on at some stage and, yeah. and road, ride on road and ride off-road. We just have to wait and see. And like I say, the only thing that we don't really know at this point in time is what it's going to cost. But we'll... Uh, because we'll That'll give us some context. Absolutely. Watch this. Uh, watch, watch this space. space.